What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's video update. Today's Monday, March 30th, starting with the Trade Hacker question of the day. How do I choose the correct deltas for my option trades? So I got a, a variation of this question in the community today. So I thought I'd take this moment to explain in a little bit more detail. When it comes to choosing your deltas, and let's go to the platform and, and look at an example. When it comes to choosing your deltas, there's no right or wrong way to do it. In our courses, we set specific criteria that we like to do based on a starting point, but by no means should the deltas you choose for specific strategies be a, this is absolutely the right way. That's not how it works. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's more of a preference and what your anticipation or what your assumption is or what your preference is for that specific trade. And this can change. I mean, if you're, you know, we like to enter some of these strategies between 30 and 60 days to expiration. So at this point, we're looking at a 46 day option cycle. But if you're choosing a shorter duration or a longer duration, your deltas can change with that as well. Remember, deltas represent probabilities. So the probabilities, for example, on the call side, and we're looking at SPY, the lower the delta, that basically is just a theoretical probability of success that that specific option will get in the money by expiration. So in this case, look at this one, a 30 delta, that's the 283 strike. So that basically has a 30% chance that that option will get to the money at expiration. Okay, so that's what that that's what that represents. So the question today was specifically around vertical spread. So let's say I was going to put on a short call vertical spread. I wanted to get bearish. And so what you can do is is we like to choose out of the money strikes and it, you know, it could be anywhere from here all the way down depending on how large of a probability of success that you want on the trade. Remember, if you want a higher probability of success, you would choose a lower delta. If you want a higher max profit, but a little bit lower probability of success, you would choose a higher delta. So let's just set one of these up. Uh, let's just choose the 48 randomly, sell vertical. That's the 265, let's do it five points wide. So let's choose the 270. Again, there's no right or wrong here. You could do three points wide, you could do 10 points wide. There's no specific width that you have to use. It just depends on what you are trying to accomplish with that trade. So if you take this over to the analyzed trade, like for example, the one we set up today wasn't on SPY, but in another symbol, we set one up similar to this. And all we were doing is we were setting up the strikes to give us a 60% probability of profit. So if we set our calendar to the expiration date, you can see in this case, the strikes that we chose, the 265, 270 on the call set, that gives us about a 60% probability of profit. Now, if we wanted to move these strikes up and say we move this one to 280 and this one to 285, so we're just moving those further away, now look what happens. We move our price slice over here, make sure we unlock our little box here. Now we have a probability of success of 70%, okay? But guess what? Our, our max profit is not quite as high and you know it's gonna, and it's gonna take more, more buying power. So it's just a preference and that goes for vertical spreads, that goes for iron condors, that goes for short strangles, it goes for every option strategy that you trade. It's really just a, a preference. In, in the case of what we are doing today and getting short, we just want it, hey, we want, it, we want a little bit of edge to our probabilities, right? We want a, a higher than 50-50 chance of prob probability but this is a directional trade. We are looking, we're bearish. We are looking to get more short the market. We're looking to add short delta to our portfolio. And so we squeezed these deltas a little bit closer. So we had about a 60% probability of success, but it's all about going down. That's what, that's what we're looking for. So hopefully that helps clarify some of that question. Let's jump into what's going on in the markets today. Looking at the Let's, let's start with the S&P futures, up 3%, up 78 points, Dow's up over 500, NASDAQ up over 274, Russell up over 20. We've got about a little over an hour left in the trading session for today. So what's driving the market? Well, we talked about last week how we don't trade based on news. 
And, you know, if you look at what's going on today, you know, we had, uh, you know, Trump came out last night and gave us, uh, you know, new distancing, social distancing guidelines, moving that all the way back to April 30th now. And so, you know, that was one major headline coming out. Obviously, the stimulus package, the $2.2 trillion stimulus package got signed on Friday. And in anticipation of that, you know, we saw the market go up, but as soon as it was signed, the market tanked. And then the market opened up last night and this morning it was down, but it's just grinded higher all day long. On top of that, we're seeing headlines such as the St. Louis Federal Reserve is predicting unemployment to get to be over 30%. I mean, there's no way to look at that. That's not good news, but yet the market is just climbing higher. So what did we do today? Based on just the price action, not on the news, well, we added some shorts to our position. I mentioned earlier, one of which was a, a, a vertical spread. We also did a bunker trade, just like we teach in our bunker strategy course. So looking for a potential rollover at some point. Now, will that happen tomorrow? Will it happen next week? Will it ever happen? Nobody knows, but that's what we are positioning to do is get, uh, you know, if, if this market continues to grind a little bit higher, we're going to continue to add in more short delta and look for a potential rollover because I just don't think we have seen the bottom yet. Other big movers, oil down another 6%, got under 20, got down to 1927. So another, another down move in oil. Oh, we see bonds up about a percent. Uh, gold down about a percent, natty gas up a percent and a half. So an actually pretty muted day compared to uh, some other massive moves that we've seen over the last few weeks. Some of the stocks, what's going on in some of the stocks? Well, some of the travel companies, Expedia is still getting crushed. You look at casinos, Win is down another 5%. We've got some of our short delta in Win, so that's working well for us. But pretty mixed bag. I mean, we've got we've got a lot of green and a lot of red on the screen. So even though the markets are up, there's still a lot of stocks that are down as well. You look at a stock like Netflix continues to do well. Now it's up 13% on the year. Obviously, a lot of people staying home. Netflix is benefiting from that. Another another stock that's benefiting is Zoom. So everybody's doing Zoom conference calls instead of in-person meetings. And, you know, look at Zoom up 118% today. It was actually up quite a bit more earlier and it's it's coming down. And it's starting to get a little bit of an inverse reaction to the rest of the market. So if the market is up, Zoom is down. If the market's down, Zoom is skyrocketing. So Interesting, uh, interesting price action there. So remember, we've got a lot of data points coming out. If we take a look at the Market Watch tab, you can see on April 1st on Wednesday, we've got the unemployment rate coming out. Uh, we've got the ADP employment report. So that's going to shed a little bit more light on what's going on. You know, today, uh, later today, we've got retail sales report. That That's at uh, 6.30 this evening. So we've got some things that could be reported that could uh, move the market overnight. And then, of course, you know, tomorrow is March 31st, which ends the end of the first quarter. So in the first few weeks of April, usually a couple weeks after the end of the quarter, is when a lot of the big companies will start reporting earnings announcements. So we will see what happens, my friends. Stay small. Stay mechanical, live to trade another day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.